Well, welcome to another video. If you haven't subscribed already, do consider subscribing to get more videos like this. Um, also, if you're not in church at the moment and you're looking for a, a place to fellowship online, do consider joining us. Um, you can go to citylights.org.uk for the link and you can join our service uh, via Zoom and you're welcome to do that. And uh, I want to share a powerful revelation with you today, something that dr dramatically changed my life and thinking. And I believe it can and it will do the same for you. And I was reminded of this just, just this week because I was, um, I was at the gym and there was someone next to me and they were covered in tattoos all down their arms, over their shoulders, everywhere. And uh, it reminded me of one of the most powerful uh, revelations that God gave me as a young man. But I want to put it into context first. And basically, I was saved at the age of five, very young. I was baptized at 12. And then at 15, I got the call of God to serve him. I knew I was going to serve God full time at some point in the future. And everything I did from that point on was directed towards getting ready to serve God as an evangelist, as a pastor. I did five years of theological training and um, I served with um, local churches and, and I got involved in different ministries. And, uh, and I knew that God was calling me in to serving him in a full-time capacity. But let me say, it wasn't always plain sailing. Uh, it never is. It still isn't. Uh, I wish it was. I wish life was a bed of roses. But there have been a lot of um, trials along the way, a lot of challenges, as they are for all believers. And, um, you know, often the greater the commission, the greater the opposition, the greater the call, the greater the pull. I remember in my early 20s, um, I went through a season of panic attacks, really debilitating, severe panic attacks, where I literally felt like I was cut off from God, that one mistake, one sin, and, and that was me. You know, I, uh, God was done with me. And, and it, was, it was so serious. I had, to, I had to get help. I had to get prayer. Um, I'd get family members to pray with me. I'd have to pray intensely and seek God until these, these panic attacks passed by and, and I felt more normal. But it was a serious thing. And I think, you know, I'm not the only one who's gone through this. Some of you might be going through it right now. Uh, an extreme form of anxiety, depression or um, just a fear that comes over you that you're lost and, and you're, you're in this world on your own and God's not with you, he's not for you, he's actually against you. And I believe at the root of this way of thinking and these fears and these attacks is basically fear. It's all grounded and rooted in fear. And the Bible says that it's, it, it's the absence of God's love. Fear is the absence of God's love because perfect love casts out fear. But one day I had a revelation and I, it was, this was after lots of prayer, lots of fasting, seeking God and asking him for freedom in this area. And I, I read Isaiah 49, 15 to 16, and it says this. It says, can a woman forget her nursing child or lack compassion for the son of her womb? Even if she could forget, I will not forget you. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Now, just to put it into context here, God is to, uh, the, the, the prophet is talking about Jerusalem, but he is also talking about God's people. And as I read this, I felt I heard the Lord say to me that my image, an image of me was on his hands. It was tattooed. That's what this word, this Hebrew word means to engrave, to inscribe. It's referring to the ancient practice of tattooing uh, by burning or cutting or puncturing the skin and then filling it with a colored substance. So it's permanent. It's referring to this practice. And the, the prophets, he's boldly, um, audaciously saying God has tattooed our image on his hands. 
What a powerful revelation. <laughs> Did you know that you were tattooed on God's hands? A picture of you every day. He, he sees you, you know, when he looks at his hands. And, and because we're in the new Jerusalem, we're the, we're the, we're the, the, the new Zion. We're going to live for God forever and ever. It's not, it's not a structure. It's God's people. That is the new Jerusalem. And I felt God was saying, if I was to get rid of your image from my hands, I would have to cut my arms off. <laughs> and listen, we do not serve a God without arms. The Bible says God's arm is mighty to save. It's mighty to deliver. It's mighty to root the enemy. And I just want to encourage you today. When I read this, it brought so much freedom, so much relief, so much comfort. And it was from this point that I began to walk in freedom. It was this point that, that I began to overcome the panic attacks, the fears, the anxiety. And it wasn't overnight, I'll be honest. It was a process. And I realized that it was God's perfect love for me that was shown at Calvary when he allowed Jesus to go to the cross. That was the expression, the demonstration of his perfect love that he was able to send his only son. How many of you, if you had a son, would allow him to, to go and die a brutal death for someone who didn't deserve it? <laughs> well, that's what God did. And I want to say to you today, if, if you've put your trust in Jesus Christ, you don't have to fear being cut off anymore. You don't have to fear any separation. You don't have to fear or come under condemnation. You don't have to live in torment. You don't have to be attacked by the enemy because you're a child of God. And he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. In fact, Paul makes one of his most powerful statements in Romans 8, 38 to 39, when he says, I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Not death, life, angels, demons, fears for today, worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below indeed. Nothing, <laughs> say nothing, nothing in all of creation is able to separate us from the love of God that's revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. This isn't a license to, to carry on sinning and do what we like, thinking it's okay, God loves me, it's fine, His grace is sufficient. It's, it's not what it's saying. It's saying that if we do make mistakes, if we do feel we're going through a season where we're faithless, God is still faithful. Where we're doubting Him, He doesn't doubt us. He still loves us. He's still for us. If we're struggling, He's still fighting for us. As Exodus 14, 14 says, the Lord will fight for us. We need, we need to be still. We need to rest in His promises. And I think the only way that we can actually be separated from God is to do it ourselves, is to separate ourselves from him. Even then, I, I don't think it's an easy thing. I think someone would have to totally reject God, totally turn away, turn the back on him. And even then, he's not rejecting that person. He's waiting for them to come back like the prodigal son. If you're struggling today, if you're going through any kind of anxiety or isolation, torment, You've got to know how much God loves you, how much he's for you. I heard a, re a minister recently uh, share his testimony on how God set him free from panic attacks and anxiety. And uh, it was actually, it was really enlightening. And he said that at, at, at the bottom of every fear was a lie. There's a lie at the, the root of every fear that we have, every, every struggle that we have with anxiety or, or panic attacks. There's a lie of the enemy. And, and for him, it was what if? What if God doesn't love you? What if you've made the biggest mistake? What if? What if? But he had to replace that with even if. <laughs> even if I do make a mistake, God still loves me. Even if I'm going through a severe trial, God is still for me. Even if the worst was to happen, God is going to bring me through. And if you can do that, replace what if with even if, I tell you, it will change your mindset and it will change your life. Paul also said in Rome, Ephesians 3, 17 to 19, he said, I pray that you being rooted and established in love. Again, it's in love. We've got to be rooted in God's love. That you may have power together with all the Lord's people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of 
of God. If you can really grasp and get a hold of God's perfect love for you today, I believe that you will walk in freedom. You will walk without fear. You will walk without depression, anxiety, panic attacks, tormenting thoughts, lies of the enemy. You will walk with a confidence, with a peace, with an assurance that you're God's child and he's never going to leave you, never going to forsake you. And nothing, 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 anywhere, anyhow, at any time can change that and can separate you from him in Jesus' name. I hope this has blessed you because I tell you, when I got this revelation, it changed so much for me. And I have to keep going back to that. If I'm ever in any doubt, if the devil devil ever tries to pull the wall over my eyes in any way, even for a moment, I go back to to the perfect love of God that he has for me and that's never going to change. And he has for you. Bless you guys. And I'll speak to you soon.